For Bronner and the offense, there's movement up front. And we will have an offside call in the neutral zone was the white team. And it'll be an automatic first down for Red. In the red zone, they are knocking on the door. Can they finish this drive off? That'll help right there. New set of downs at the 14. Colby Bronner out of the gun. In motion goes Lopez. Bronner looking left. His throw is incomplete. Once again, off the hands of a receiver. That time it was Tenor. Now the defense closing quickly though on Tenor, even if he would have made the reception, I think he would have been brought down rather quickly. We'll make it second and 10 from the 15. A six point game here with 7.42 to go in the second quarter. And fifth grade game, second of five today. Bronner out of the shotgun. Motion man is Tenor. They pitch it to Lopez, and Lopez is met right away. What a tackle that was. Was that? That was big, that was big one three again. Let's see it. Let's see you hit it. Come on. Leah Tuma. Le Leah Tumua, I think. Leah Tumua. Yeah, that's, Leah that's Tumua. my mistake. Oh, you're good. Leah good. Tumua. With the, with the immediate tackle after that little uh, that Mahomes-style pitch forward. Now they do call that a forward pass, even that little two-handed shovel. Does count as a forward pass. Uh, out of the gun is Bronner. He'll look left. Bronner throws again towards the sideline. Caught. Tenor. Touchdown, Red. Cassidy Tenor on the touchdown reception as Bronner throws another dime. Red is on the board, and we're tied at six with 6.55 to go before half. That's not the first time Cassidy Tenner's put one of those belts in front of him and stared at a camera with his boys. This guy is a playmaker, and as you can see here, catches that ball in the flat, and once he gets close, he's got a nose for that end zone. He knows he's going to get in that end zone. <laughs> so he's feeling better, and he is into the end zone for six. Good drive there by Red. Really good drive, and that was much needed for, for them. You know, White locking down on defense the first few drives. Red figuring something out on that that time. I think the 25-yard pass to Jace Armstrong really kick-started their success. And we'll see if they, uh, looks like they're going to go for two. Or one, my mistake. Jumped the gun there. Oh, no, you're right. Uh, you're right. I mean, we, we're so... We're so used to calling it a two-point conversion, but here at the Youth Football Invitational, it's a one-point conversion unless you don't get it, like the red team did not get it, and then it's a zero-point conversion. Now, if you want to kick it, we got uprights in the net right there. You can go ahead and kick it. That is a two-point conversion. So a ball off the foot is worth two. Gotcha. Well, Coach G, we've seen, I think, four attempts today in the two games combined. We have not seen a successful one- or two-point conversion yet. I mean, what's crazy out here is the 70-yard plays are everywhere, but yeah. it's, the, it's the seven... You know, it's the, it's the two yard plays that are the ones that are the hardest to get. And you know, that, that makes sense. I mean, it makes sense that um, it's hard to score. I mean, especially there's less room, there's less places to run to. It's, it's not as easy as it may sound. So hats off to the kids uh, on defense too. Plus after you give up a touchdown, you wanna be like, you know, you wanna stop them from scoring any more points. So good job holding them to just six instead of more than that. Now uh, we are square six apiece as White with the football back, that throw is intercepted by Kaysen Meyer. Meyer at the 25, and he is hit at the 26 yard line. Meyer on the interception, as he's gonna get the turnover belt. Wearing it proudly, Kaysen Meyer number 18 on the red team. Man, how cool is it to be Kaysen Meyer right now? I, I thought maybe he was gonna sniff the end zone there. I, I don't mean the end zone, but I thought maybe breaks one tackle, get a pick six. If I'm not mistaken, the Colorado Youth Football Invitational does not have a pick six yet. I'm waiting to see who's going to be the first one to get one. That would be something. I'm sure I'm sure we'll get one sooner or later. Someone's going to go uh, to leave on us and take one all the way back to the house. Case and Meyer, right place, right time. And uh, he was able to get the pick. We'll see if we can uh, meet with him down there. One of the hard things about getting those sideline interviews is that we um, the kids go right back out on the field a lot of the times too. So we'll see if we can get a hold of Case and Meyer or uh, or Cassidy Tenor. I know we need them both. So 
All right, well, guys are working on that down there as we resume action here for the red team. First play, a run up the middle for Ling and Andrew Ling. It's been a carbon copy of what he's done today. I think Nigel's down there with Case and Meyer. Said, Give me one play. All right, I'm here with uh, Case and Meyer. Uh, you just came up with a huge play on defense. Uh, what did you see there that allowed you to make that play? So I saw that we didn't have a quarter, and I saw cornerback, and then I saw the quarterback look at the wide receiver, so I read his slant route and just. Nice. Also, what did you eat for breakfast this morning? You seem like you had a lot of energy. I had some bacon um, and all the other stuff. But all righty. Thank you. Back to you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you, Jazzy. I, I would eat bacon interview. every day if I could, especially if I made plays like that. Out in the flat, it's Tenor again. Tenor at the 10, and he's a ran out of bounds. Cassidy Tenor catches one in space, and he turns it upfield. I like how he grabs that ball, makes sure it's his and nobody else's, and then he just knows where to go. He knows how to go take a look here. They run him on the flats, right? He's wide open. He knows it. Everyone knows it. Plus, he's got a blocker downfield. Really great execution yeah, on, a, absolutely. on an awesome play. Great downfield blocking for, for the offense. And once again, Bronner throwing another dime. Slinging it around the field. Uh, so first and 10, or first and goal rather, at the 10. Red after falling behind at six to zero. They have figured things out in quarter number two as we will have a timeout. Six minutes to go before half. But Red driving after the interception by Case and Meyer. What an exciting day. What an amazing venue. What a cool town. Boulder, Colorado, right? I mean, what an amazing university. The University of Colorado National Champions in football and now rebuilding a program like no one's ever seen before. You know, it's all, every one of those people we just mentioned was a fourth grader or a fifth grader one time playing football. And so yeah. it's just amazing to see the, uh, the growth of what the game looks like with the young guys versus what it looks like with Coach Prime's guys. And then, of course, you know, the Broncos. <laughs> well, the Broncos. Maybe the Chiefs. Well, anyways. Sorry, did that, that cut deep? Don't worry, I'm a Vikings fan, so we've got a total of zero Super Bowls in the 43 years I've been alive. Mm. Maybe one day, Coach G. I'm trying to raise my daughter to be a Broncos fan so she doesn't have to feel the pain that those that cheer for the purple feel for. <laughs> Here we pick things back up first and goal on the 10. You got Bronner a couple yards deep in the shotgun. He will pitch it to Cassidy Tenner. Tenner bounces it outside. Tenner at the five. Tenner for the end zone. Touchdown! As he does a little somersault onto the, the beanbag there, Cassidy Tenner has his second TD of the first half. My goodness. Two for Tenner. They know. And another great play there. Great uh, redirection, misdirection. And, uh, you know, by the time they figure out that the ball is in Cassidy Tenner's hands, it's usually a little bit too late for the white team. That was just get him the football and let him make a play. Look at that. Speed. Speed for days. Speed yeah, kills. Cool little, you know, it's, there's options on that play. That one was going to just go to the running back, right, tenor. But they have other, you know, layers on that onion that they can use. But the thing about Cassie Tenor is he's so fast going side to side, right? He, he, get, he gets his by getting east and west. Because we all know he can go north and south. Right. But the east and west movement and gain that he makes, and it's usually initial, right, right away. That's why it's important to get that angle on him because if you know, him. yeah, he's got that if they're even, he's leaving type of speed. Beautiful. And right there, he scores his second touchdown, 10 or so far on the day. Uh, yeah, nice day rushing. Three for 21 and a touchdown, and then also receiving. He's got two grabs for 30 yards and a receiving touchdown as well. So one rush, one receiving. And his team has erased that 6-0 deficit. How great are these stats right here in front of us? You know, last year we didn't have the luxury of the stat man going right into our screen. We didn't have enough space for it. This year we made sure it was important to us that we had stats live in the moment to give to you here on Coach GTV. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge help. It's a, it's a big step up from last year, and I'm sure it's going to keep getting better. But now we can just see things like Cassidy or you know, Colby Bronner. Is seven for nine, throwing the football for 72 yards and a TD. As Bronner going to try for the two, throwing for the end zone. And this one is incomplete. 
Incomplete. Yeah, Boo's having a good game. Boo Browner's having a good game. And, and part of that is, you know, when you've got a Cassidy tenor out there, then everyone maybe focuses on them. But the other thing is they might say, hey, we're going to have Boo beat us, and Boo's doing a good job. Red team's taking oh, care of business. More than a good job, I would say. I mean, seven of nine, and I'd say the two incompletions were guy were balls off the guy's hands that went incomplete. But, I mean, he's dialing it up. Mentioned he might be the smallest guy, one of the smallest guys out there in this fifth-grade game, but he plays uh, a lot bigger. I mean, his, he's got a cannon for an arm, and everything's been on target. So a lot of action so far early in this game, and I expect there to be a lot more before this half ends. No doubt, no doubt. Long way to go before even we re even reach the halfway point. Twelve to six. There's uh, Riker Renton, and Renton doing what he does. Forty-five midfield. Renton in the open field. Renton off to the races. Twenty-five, twenty. Are there he goes. Touchdown, White. Are you kidding me? We do have a flag at the forty-five, but Riker Renton. Look at that touchdown, Selly. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. What's the flag? What are we doing? What's the flag? That's not the first oh, <laughs> or the last touchdown he'll score. He's, he's been in that end zone a number of times. Holding on the offense. But oh, what do you know? No. Wiped out. Oh, no. A holding call. 70 yards of running. He is smooth. Riker Renton is smooth. Jeez. But he's tough. He runs through the trenches. So... Cassidy Tenner does a great job of getting outside and, and, and getting up the field. And this is not calling him less tough, I'm, but there is a way that Riker Renton goes through the middle, and I do love the toughness involved to go get five yards through the middle, then get left for five yards, and then be gone for 60. Right? That's how he gets his 70. Absolutely. Unfortunately, yeah, that was impressive. all for not. All for not. All for not. Holding call will do that. And it's a, at least a the third time we've seen that today where a big chunk play gets taken back because of a offensive hold or a false start, something along those lines. So. I, these kids too, man, I, I, I think they're, they're, they're in a spot where they love being an all-star and they want to show everyone, you know, they got that swag and they got this and that. I do feel like one thing that can get you in a little trouble is the extracurriculars or maybe the away from the play stuff. If you're, if you're in the play, make a play. If you're not in the play, don't get your number called. You know what I mean? Because it's right. usually for all the wrong reasons. Absolutely, Coach G. First and 10. They run around the left side, getting the edge. 45 midfield into red territory. And White picks it up. Nice looking run there for the White team. Gannon Roberts did. Now Roberts. Right there around the edge. Um, yeah, I, I can imagine you, you want to give it to a Riker, but... Uh, he just ran 70 yards, so he's kind of probably tired. He probably wants yeah. to take a playoff. Give him a blow. Roberts uh, making, it, making it happen on both sides of the ball. Playing, uh, playing linebacker. A couple plays on that one drive. And now a big carry. That was his first, uh, first carry of the game. Or second carry, rather. Two for 22 yards now. Well, first and 10 on the red, 45. Hand off, it's Riker Renton between the tackles. Renton once again, bounces it outside. Renton in the open field across the 30. And Renton is brought down around the waist, but not before a first down and then some. 15 yards for Renton. Incredible run there. I mean, you could give him the football in every play, and I think, <laughs> I think you'd be all right. You'd have a lot of big plays. Well, what I love about the red team coaching staff is they've got some great play calling. They're using deception. They're, they're getting everyone involved. And what I love about the white team is they know exactly who they should give the ball to. Right? Let's not, over, let's not overcomplicate this. Let's keep it simple. Simple, stupid. No yeah. question. No question. So timeout on the field. Coaches want to talk things over. We have 5.03 left in the second quarter in an exciting first half. First quarter was mostly dominated by the white team getting out to that 6-0 lead and then on the first snap. Yeah, yeah, Renton going 70 big yards on the very first play. If you think about it, that that means that red team has given up zero points in every snap since then. Oh, so, yeah, um, absolutely. You got to be happy about that. And that's kind of what we talked about with coach starts is that he's he it's not how you start, it's how you finish, right? And he started his career off at Northfield with a brand new school and barely had enough kids. Probably had some, you know, jerseys that were half torn up and stuff like that, but he did it and now they're 10 and one last year, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's great, that's great. And they've turned things around in the second quarter as well, outscoring them 12 to zero. But White making some noise on this drive. 
They'll throw the screen, and it's incomplete. It fumble. That's yeah, that fumble. was real close to being a backwards lateral. I'm, I'm still waiting for someone to jump on that ball. That's Nolan Mann, the quarterback, the southpaw for the white team, throwing the screen. Second southpaw in, in, in two games today How so about far that? at quarterback. Yeah. I don't see that too often. Lefty's out here slinging it. Uh, it just goes to show you the kind of athletes we're dealing with, the kind of players we're dealing with. And, and of course, you know, kids are either going to get snaps and then they're going to say, we gotta, we're got we trying to get everyone at least seven or eight snaps at their position, right? Um, and then see what happens. Uh, Renton again on second and 10. Renton to the outside. Renton to the 20, to the 15. And he gets the pads down, takes on the contact. Uh -oh, oh, fumble, fumble at the end. I did not see the ball come out. Someone got their helmet on a football, and uh, Renton, for all his great running, coughs it up right there. And the red team continues their, their dominance in quarter number two. See who got the recovery there for, for the red team. That was, that was Memphis Montoya on the fumble recovery. Yeah, Montoya able to secure it before it got out of bounds. Ball did come out, you know. I mean, if you wanted to coach this challenge, you could do it. We have that capability here, but I, I feel like that ball did come out. Check this stiff arm right here, that left arm. He just, he does a great job with his offhand of getting guys away from him. Big hit delivered, big hit received, and then the ball came out just right before he hits the ground. Ooh, number two, that's Jimmy Mon Mondragon there. Jimmy Mondragon. Mondragon. Man, double dragon. Man, so Red have it on their own 15. Under five minutes to go as they've already outscored them 12 to zero in the second quarter. Pass is incomplete, looking for Tenor. Right back to him. Nice coverage. Yeah, we're down there in the Archuleta end zone. It's fun to see the high, high tight shot that those guys do. And I tell you what. Uh, and Nolan Mann. Cool, quick play there. <laughs> Mark Jackson down below us, stretching out, getting ready for his big game coming up next. Oh, man. Mark's going to be calling some games. And great shot there from, uh, from Nick, high above the end zone, right down there at the 15-yard at the line. Yeah, that is way cool. See, they see the alignment. A little less scary than the bird's nest you were in last year. Remember that oh, thing? Oh, tell me. I don't, I don't want to even think. <laughs> so... <laughs> First and 10 for the red team throw down the middle. He had a man wide open on the post, but overshot him by a couple yards. Oh, man. I think that QB would like to have that throw back. Is that 19? Yeah, that's Boo, man. I think Boo would like to have that throw back because, again, this Northfield coaching staff is designing plays where wide receivers are running up the field wide open. Sooner or later, that's going to come back to haunt you. That was Jace Armstrong, the intended target. He already had that 24-yard 24 24-yard 24 catch for his only grab today. And he was open there for another big one. Yeah, and I think Jace kind of turned it in when I think his quarterback thought he was going to run it up. O'Bronner throws out in the flat. It's caught. Lopez, first down. And Bronner hits another guy in stride as a couple of defenders for the white team are slow to get up. Catch and run there by Carter Lopez. And the big man rumbling for the first down. A 4.36 to play. Both defenders up on their feet. And it's good to see. Good to see being helped to that sideline. That was number nine for the white team, Nolan Mann. We are up here high atop the field here on a Bit of a uh, interesting setup with the scaffolding. If you notice, the camera does a little wiggling. That's uh, not designed. We did not design it that way. Uh, but we wanted to give you the best shot from the high angle. And this is the best shot from the high angle. It sure is. It sure is. I like it. I like it. I mean, if you can get around the, uh, the little wiggle. Yeah. I think we got a good view of these fifth graders going at it on the gridiron. First and ten. Bronner. Deep ball. In traffic. Picked off. Interception for White. Big time play for the defense. That's Gianni Paldino. Paldino representing the Broomfield Blitz. Big play for White as a flag did come out, but I think it was after the interception was made. 
And a big hit at the end of it as well by Tenor. <laughs> Yeah, I think even Paul Dino, too, saw that there was a guy coming to tackle, and he said, well, don't worry, I'm a hitter myself. As you see there, just zoomed out in time to catch that interception. Paul Dino right there delivers the blow. Uh, those defensive guys like to do that. Yeah, Gianni with, uh, with a nice interception. Dangerous throw there by Bronner. I think they're calling up interference or something here. They're pointing whoa, that whoa, it's whoa, red whoa. ball. They're pointing it's red ball. Well, that changes things immensely. No one really quite knows what the call is. Oh, the, the, the white coaches are barking at the officials from that far sideline. Very un, un, unsatisfied. See Coach Brayton having a word right now. Man, so that wipes out the, uh, the interception by G uh, Gianni. And a huge break for the red team. I think there was a penalty, and then the coaches just got one. I think coach, someone on the staff got another 15 added on. Wow. Hate to see it. You do hate to see that. That's a big, it was an offensive pass interference. I'm not sure what the call was. It, no, because then the interception would have stood. So it must have been something on the defense, maybe roughing the passer. Or a defense, yeah. Hmm. Sometimes the one, you know, when games, sometimes when they get a little over-officiated, it starts to get a little disjointed. So hopefully we can get back to kind of making sure what's going on. I know Coach Brayton over there, he's looking for a full explanation. You know. Man. These are his stomping grounds here at the University of Colorado. You know, a buff great in the, uh, in the early 2000s when I was a kid. I remember him in his, uh, his playing days. And he has not lost that competitive spirit, that's for sure. No, and he's, he's there to wrap a whole high school. And I think just like Coach Starts was able to do at Northfield, he's going to turn you know, that Warriors program into something special. First and 10, they give it to Tenor. Tenor makes a move. Tenor to the 35. And Cassidy Tenor doing what he does. Gets all the way inside the 30-yard line after a flurry of moves. Yeah, I mean, those first five yards he gets he's kind of running to the sideline and then the next 10 or so he's he's moving and shaking man big gainer puts the football up to the 27 yard line red will try and take advantage of that non-interception or the interception that turned out to not be one i mean they touched even tenor they touch him at the 33 yard line he still somehow gets five or six more yards i mean he just it's toughness it's glide it's it's change of speed it's agility it's all fun to watch though, that's for sure First and 10 after the pickup by Cassidy Tenner. A little pitch again. This time it's Lopez and Carter Lopez gets up to the 21. Kind of those misdirection little shovel pitches working out for the red team right now. And they're going to a variety of players. You know, whether it's Tenner or Carter Lopez or Briscoe or you know Jace Armstrong, everyone getting in on the fun. Three forty-one here left in the second quarter. Legendary PA Kyle announcer. Berry trying to get the the white defense and the white fan section fired up. Love that guy. Another pitch from Bronner, and this one back to Casty Tenner. This time he tries to drag a couple defenders with him, and he'll be just shy of that first down marker. But same, same, same style, same idea, with those short pitches. Yeah, it's kind of a misdirection type thing. Yeah. So I get the defense going one way and then go back across the middle. Makes it third down and two. Ball's in the, on the 19-yard line. We're at 2.56 and counting here, second quarter. From the shotgun, Bronner hands off, draw play, and a first down. Or, yeah, Andrew Ling, I think he got enough for a first down. I'm showing fourth down, according to the far side guy. Maybe he was just short. Uh, I, I, I could be wrong there. Yeah, it looks like about a yard short. So Ling does not get it. I mean, no gain on the play, it looks like, I guess, yeah. Fourth and two. Ling will come off the field. And Kaysen Meyer on the field, number 18.
Yeah, whistles in a timeout will be used by Red. Coach Starts will use one and use a little extra time to talk things over before this fourth down and two. And Red already with a huge quarter. 12 can't, points. Can't see it from here, Becker, but Coach Prime's got two golf carts parked in the corner over there. They are like Pimp My Ride edition, uh, Boulder style, and it is fun to watch. It is so cool to be here in the in the home of uh, the Buffalo's University football program. Like, this is D1 as, as it gets. Um, and, and I can see why guys like, you know, th this is the same place that Travis Hunter works out in. This is where Shadur, you know, tries to throw passes that Shiloh doesn't intercept. And this is exactly where the fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth graders, the best ones in the state of Colorado, come to find themselves. And they got the best team in terms of uh, TV on it too, Coach GTV. So I like that. It only makes sense. I like the sound of that, yeah. Featured in the Amazon Prime series, Coach Prime. And you know, a lot of the footage is shot here at the indoor facility. So now we get to see uh, these fifth graders go at it on that same field. Fourth and two after the timeout. Here's uh, Bronner from the gun. Whistles before the snap, and we will have a false start on red. So fourth and seven now. And we'll see if that changes the Looked like they were thinking. going with the same play they scored on earlier, just a quick little side pass over to um, Cassidy. So, Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, they were going right back to that play, and unfortunately there's early movement up front. So fourth and seven, you got Armstrong split out wide to the left, single man. And then Lopez starts in motion. Bronner looking left the whole way for Armstrong. Jump ball off his hands and incomplete. And it will be a turnover on downs. White takes over possession. A jump ball there for Jace. Armstrong looking his way from the jump. But it goes incomplete. And that's one of those plays we talked about, has levels, has layers to it, right? They've ran it two or three times. You think, okay, they're going to go to the flat. Yeah, they're going to go to the flat. And then that time, the guy that had been blocking on the flat goes deep and kind of runs that seam route. Pretty a nice little execution here. Just didn't get the pitch and catch to work together. White team, they're making sure that no big plays happen here. So you had three defenders right in the area. Uh, Armstrong was the biggest guy there. Just couldn't quite haul it in and bring it down. The White takes over on their own 24. You got two minutes to go in this first half. White so far 134 total yards, but they've all been rushing. They do not have a single passing yard yet. And there's a big run by Renton. Kind of uses the referee as a screen. Renton at the 45 to midfield. Into red territory. Riker Renton breaking tackle after tackle. Spinning off guys. And he gets down all the way to the 37. He's just a big play waiting to happen. Yeah, he's fun to watch. He's he's easy to love the way he plays the game. It's it's got a little hint of magic in it. He's kind of like when you get ball gets in his hands, you're expecting something magical to happen. And why wouldn't you? Well, from what we've seen today, he had one, don't forget he had a 70 yard touchdown taken off the board. Used a nice pick there from uh, from the uh, the umpire right in the middle of the field, and then just broke tackle after tackle. He's he's stepping out of all these arm tackles. You really got to wrap up when you're tackling Renton. These, and these arm tackles aren't going to cut it. 143 on the clock. White driving down by six. And Coach Brayton will use a timeout. Now on the 32 of Red after that gain of 44 by Riker Renton. And he is now up to 164 rushing yards in this first half. That's with the 75 carries. That's with the 70 taken off the board. Yep, yep. That second touchdown already right, wiped out. Didn't so. Count. so he'd be well over, obviously, well over 200. That's wild, man. I mean, it makes total sense. He's he's the kind of guy that, like, when he gets the ball in his hands, just it, it's like you almost watch him running. You forget that it's, you know, you forget that it's um, tackle football out there. It, is there, there's times where that happens where, where people are playing in a basketball game against LeBron James and they're almost just in awe of LeBron James. They kind of forget to do their job. <laughs> kind of like uh, people are in awe of Mark Jackson down there as he was snapping for some photographs with, uh, with eager fans. Mr., uh, Mr. Jackson, the guy who caught the touchdown at the end of the drive, 86 AFC Championship game. Oh, a double reverse ball came out and White will recover it and they fall back on the football. A double reverse attempted there by the white team. 
Unfortunately, a miscue on the back end of that reverse and a big loss on the play. Loss of eight. Big loss on the play. Yeah, we, the, the only, you know, it's not exactly that red team is stopping white team. It seems like white team has kind of been the one slowing white team down the last couple times. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. You know, these uh, unforced errors, uh, limit those. Is White doing their best to get some points before halftime. You give it right back to Riker Renton here. Changing fields. Renton gets a nice block. He's to the 37 and out the 35. Steps out of that tackle. He's impossible to bring down. Renton still going. Just hit his balance, his vision, just a perfect blend. And as he's inside the 25, but he may be slow to get up. He was brought down kind of awkwardly on that shoulder, and he is favoring his shoulder. Oh, I hate to see that. The, the right one. No, oh, no. Big hit did kind of come in here at the end, maybe a little late, I don't know, but kind of just. Oh, yeah. Big guy kind of fell on him, and, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, there's no malicious intent per se, but at the same time, you'd hate to see any of these guys get hurt after the play. You hate to see him get hurt during the play. Um, you know, and it's a physical game, so you can't you can't get too oh, worked up about a guy tackling your son. You know what I mean? Um, so, but in true Riker fashion, he's back, and he'll probably walk off, and I bet we'll see him in sooner rather than later. You hope you hope for the best there. It was definitely the, the right shoulder for Riker Renton. And now third and three for the white team. We have a minute and five and counting. Spinning off uh, the first rusher and breaking it outside. Throws on the run. It's complete for a first down. Great play. Nice footwork there by number two. Yeah, that was Romello Henderson getting the foot down inbounds after the athletic play by Gianni Paldino, who's now in at quarterback. And Gianni did have that interception initially. Um, right, but then it got, was that the one that got taken that back? That was the one that got taken back, yeah. Yeah, but. Yeah. And uh, just like this play right here, looks like uh, that's going to be wiped out as well. Football's moving all the way back to the 39-yard line. Man, get your kid out of there. Get kid out of there. So White, man, they just can't buy a break when it comes to these penalties. So make it third down and a whole long ways to go now from the 30-yard line. Here's Paul Dino, throws back across his body. It's caught somehow at the 25-yard line. 34 made that catch. What a catch. Out of nowhere. That was Simon Marshall. Improbable. And they'll still be shy of the first down, but that was Well, but they're shy of the else. first down, but it's four-down territory. you got to kind of think you're not going to punt it from the 20. So any yardage you can get that gets you closer to that line to gain is, uh, is a huge play. That was a very low probability of that being completed, and somehow Paul Dino was able to get it to, to his target. And Simon Marshall with the big catch. Tackle was made by Ragin Thomas Silva. Big 77 on that defense. Playing slot corner right now. So we have a fourth and about a yard. Fourth and maybe even less than a yard. Got a clock ticking here, 38 seconds. Renton still on the sideline for White. Paul Dino from the shotgun immediately goes to his left. He throws up in the air and it is intercepted by Red. High point at that one, that was 13, right? That sure was. Is that Jace Armstrong? That's Armstrong, he's going nice up player. high. You know, he's already a big guy as it is. And when you got hands like that, like you said, high pointing the football. Would have been a turnover on downs even if he wouldn't have made the play. But Red makes the, makes the stop. We'll see if we can get a word with, uh, with Armstrong. Nice play. Oh yeah, I can see Jazzy and Nigel down there. They're creeping, they're thinking about it. They're trying to get in there. One of the things about trying to interview these guys is that sometimes they gotta go right back out on the field. So we got yeah, 26 seconds left in this first half. I think Red Team forgot that there's still a game going on. They're having quite the celebration down there. 
Uh, the refs are asking. Uh, <laughs> I thought they were just going to take a knee and call it the way they were sitting there. <laughs> yeah, 26 seconds remaining. Still got some time. You know, big plays all over the place in this Colorado Youth Football Invitational. So they have it on their own 15 after the interception by Armstrong. See if uh, White kind of plays a prevent defense. Got a one high sa or two high safeties right now. At 26 seconds. I think we'll go down uh, to Jazzy and Nigel for an interview right after this play. We got Jace Armstrong with Nigel. Here they are. All right, I'm here with Jace Armstrong. You just came up with a huge pick to uh, stop them in the red zone. Uh, what did you see there to allow you to make the play? Um, there was like two or three men on me. I just saw that ball up there, so I just went and grabbed my arms on that and intercept that ball. Nice. And then you also had a big tackle uh, earlier in the second quarter uh, that stalled one of their drives. Um, you were sort of playing in the middle of that defense. Um, what did you see there? That was it. Just did it look pretty fast to you, or were you able to catch up to it pretty quickly? It looked like you were. Yeah, it was pretty fast. I just didn't want that guy to score because he's pretty good, and I just didn't want him to score. So I just smacked my arms on the ball and forced him out of bounds. Nice. All righty. Appreciate it. Back to you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Nigel. And on that note, we were, we have hit the halftime break. Big second quarter for Red. And Jace Armstrong there with the interception at the end. But a 12-6 ball game. And as Red, uh, yeah, they really turned the tide in that second quarter. White, all despite Ry uh, Riker Renton's 180 rushing yards, they only have six points. And I think a lot of that has been because of the penalties taking these big plays back. Yeah, tip of the, tip of the cap there to Coach Starts and uh, what he's been able to do. The game didn't go his way. First play of the game. The other team scored on you and made it look easy. Um, they've done it one or two other times, the white team, but they never gotten down. Coach starts and his guys, they, uh, they're they playing hard defense. It's going to be really uh, interesting to see what Coach Brayton can do coming out of this halftime, what adjustments he's looking to make. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll have a nice halftime uh, speech and, and adjustments oh. being made. But uh, these kids out here just having fun, having a blast, and uh, just a great scene for us here at the Colorado Youth Football Invitational. Do we got Nigel down there with the coach? Yeah, let's go oh, down we to have, Nigel. Oh, we have Nigel. All right, Coach, we had that uh, big play on, uh, for for the white team at the beginning of the game, but you guys were able to get back into it and, and take the lead. How are you able to do that? You know, yeah, one play, one touchdown. That that kid's really, really special. If We've seen it through the game. Anytime they give it to him, it's hard to tackle. So, um, really, it's just staying calm, letting the kids play, you know, and just let them be themselves. They've played really good defense since, so... We'll see if we can replicate it in the second half. They just tried to score. I mean, they, they were in the red zone, um, and your guy, uh, Jace, came up with a huge, huge play. Uh, how satisfying is that, knowing that they came so close to scoring, but you were able to stop them? You were able to bend and not break? Twice near the end zone, right? We've had two turnovers on that side. Turnovers is the name of the game. You win with turnovers, so we've been fortunate from that side. And uh, what, what are you going to do in the second half uh, in order to secure this win? Because right now, I guess it. Well, we're hoping to run the ball and bleed that clock so number one doesn't get the ball back. <laughs> All righty. Appreciate it, Coach. Back to you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Nigel. That was quite the interview there, Coach. Uh, he's very scared of Riker Renton, but also uh, very happy with the turnovers that they've created on defense. So we're going to take a short break here at halftime. We have seven and a half minutes before we start the third quarter. But uh, thanks so much for being with us. Alex Becker and Jeff Gersh calling the game with you. And uh, I hope you can join us for half number two when we come back after these messages. All right, I'm here with uh, Coach Brayton. And uh, Coach, you had that big play at the beginning of the game, um, but it kind of got away towards the end of the first half. Uh, what do you need to do to get back the momentum? Uh, we're just going to do what we do. Uh, we're going to go out there, we're going to run the football well, and we're going to eliminate some of the mistakes, and we should be fine. All right, perfect. Appreciate it. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, there was Nigel there with head coach of, of, the, of the white team, Tyler Brayton. He said, and, we're just going to do what we do. And we're yeah. going to run the ball well. And that sounds like a guy who loves football. That, that is a football guy. Hey, former second team, all Big 12 in 2002, playing for these Colorado Buffaloes. Tyler Brayton, um, yeah, long history here. Look at some of the numbers here from the first half. Interesting to me, the passing yards. 
White only six passing yards in the first half. They've really run the ball so well with Riker Renton, 180 on the ground, and it could have been a lot more, obviously, without that touchdown being taken off the board. But um, Coach G, uh, 12 to six, and see, see some of the guys on that White team there. So many standouts on both sides of the football as well. I mean, guys from Gannon Roberts to Paul Dino to, uh, to Reese Leonard, who we got an interview with as well. Jackson. Webb, Jackson Underwood, right? The O-linemen are doing a great yeah. job, too. Zach McGuire. Sometimes the, the you know, the, the skill guys get a lot of love and a lot of credit, but I tell you what, if you got Coach Z Martinez running your, your football program, it's going to be all about the trenches, too, taking a look at the red squad. Um, and uh, you look at Giovanni Johnson, number 31, playing on that O-line. I saw him down here getting his guys fired up at the halftime break. He was taking charge in that huddle and saying, let's go win this thing. And to see that from, you know, fifth graders, these kids, uh, these kids, it means a lot to them. They want to win. Red team is ready, yep, yep. And, uh, and white team, you know, they started hot. They've got all the numbers, except they don't got the points they need. Yeah, they, they only got six when it comes to points, but they only got six when it comes to passing yards. Maybe we'll see if Coach Starts and his boys um, get out and connect on some of those deep passes. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I think both coaches know White wants to win the football. We heard from Coach Starts going into the halftime break on how Riker Renton makes such a big difference. Um, but then, and then Coach Brayton saying that we want to run the football as well. So I think we can ex expect some smash mouth ball coming from the White side. Just will Red be able to make those tackles when needed? It's going to be an interesting second half. Coaching staff has done an amazing job for both teams. I'd really like the way the Red team has called their plays. You know, I... It leaves you options for your quarterback. If, if you see guys up by the line of scrimmage, throw the deep ball. If you see guys playing way back, hit that underneath route to Cassidy Tenner, whoever it is, and let him do the work. They've really put these kids in a great position to succeed, and they've done it with three practices. Yeah, how about that? Oh how about gosh. that? That just shows uh, the experience of the coaches, being able to get the guys ready, and also the talent level on the players because it's tough to get acclimated that quickly, playing with guys you aren't accustomed to, to be playing with and learning new plays, new offense, new defense. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty awesome to see here at this All-Star game. Uh, yeah, 12-6, to 6, lots of talent on both sides, and I'm really excited for the second half. Keep in mind, the sixth grade game comes up next. That means you're going to start to see the sixth graders warming up in the end zone. You might see them in the background of the plays here, and they're getting bigger and stronger as we get uh, closer to midnight tonight. The sixth grade squad, that's going to be Mark Jackson's first game. He'll be doing color commentary with our guy Nick Archuleta on the play-by-play. -play. All right, so, yeah. that should be a great one. Absolutely. Sixth grade game coming up next. But not before we are done here in the fifth grade game. Still a big half of football to play. Hopefully we get going here in just a minute. And that was interesting. Coach, uh, Both coaches gave Nigel a lot there to, to work with as far as what they want to do and what's worked out for them. See, there's Coach Startzer on your screen right now. Yeah, one of the things you got to love about Coach Startzer, he, he coached all the different sports, but to take a team from 1-9 and nine to 8-4, and four, a team that had one win out of 10 to two playoff appearances, you know, to take a school that never had a football team and give them a football team, that, that, that's so much bigger than, than even what it sounds like, and it sounds pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, I think they, they just got to keep winning the turnover battle. That's another thing he really harped on going into that halftime break. Turnovers are everything, he said. And we're doing a good job in the first half with that. So we'll see if they can continue you know, taking care of the football and maybe forcing one on defense. They'll go to Tenner on the very first play of the third quarter. And Tenner gets the edge before he's ran out of bounds just shy of the 35. And Tenner getting a lot of work in uh, in this one. Already with two catches. And uh, it's like our rushing stats, hopefully. But uh, anyway, he's got a, a lot of a lot of action running and receiving he's got a lot of his work receiving it looks like a run you know that one I think probably you could call a run but but they they give it to him in such a manner and this has to do with the coaching they give it to him in such a manner where is it a run is it a pass yeah, yeah I, you right, don't even right. Know. by the time you know guess what Cassidy he gone he gone so six carries for 44 yards mentioned those two catches for 30 yards and he's got a touchdown through the air and on the ground so we'll get a false start on the offense Make it second down and 11. Yep, and that's one of the things about having offenses that involve motion, right? Oh, yeah. Some guys don't do it, and some guys like Sean McVay do it all the time, you know? And uh, and the thing is, when you got motion, it's a great tool to use when you know how to use it. But if, you, if you're moving early or kind of, you know, a little, a little too soon, you're going to lose five yards, so. Absolutely. That throw and just another wrinkle makes things more complicated. 
A second Double down motion. and 11. Bronner back to throw. Deep ball picked off. And White with the interception. Coach Brayton's defense, as you can see him clapping his hands. I think I know who that was. I think he's done this once before. Was it Gianni? Paul Dino. Paul Dino. And Man, this, this one will not be taken off the yeah. board. Yeah, and you, you could see the, uh, uh, the couple assistants from the Arapaho coaching staff had a, just wanted to clarify a few things from what happened because not only did they not get the interception, but then there was 15 yards added on top. So Right. That was um, a, that's a 30-yard swing, definitely, and possession swing. But, but uh, another play here where red team had the ball on offense. Red team had a guy running deep, and red team did not complete the pass. And in this case, completed it to the other team. Yeah, unfortunate there. Colby Bronner, first interception thrown by him today. He's had, you know, a heck of a day through the air. 83 passing yards and a passing touchdown just in the first half. You know, not what Coach Starts was looking for as he harped on that turnover battle right before halftime. Well, here we go with the wide offense. Scott will hand off. It's Riker Renton. Shoulder looks okay. He's at the 35, and he is swung down to the turf at the 34. Tough kid, Riker Renton is. Quick little Buffaloes update there. 72 for Marquette, 69 oh. for Coach Tad Boyle and his Buffaloes in uh, trying to get a victory to go to the Sweet 16. So we'll keep you up oh to date my. on that. Yeah. If, if I lose track, guys, of what's going on in the play, it's because I'm watching a basketball game. Don't worry. Yeah, we, got a, we got a full house here at the Colorado Youth Football Invitational, but you got to think a lot of people in this city right now have all eyes on that basketball game as there's an end around. Looking for blockers downfield now, cutting it inside, weaving back outside, a big gainer. There for White, that was Dylan Herver, uh, Huber. Yeah, Dylan Hoover there did a nice job. I like how he kept pace. He wasn't looking to run to the line of scrimmage as fast as he could. He wasn't looking to be a jolt or a bolt. He took his sweet time. He read it. He reacted and then made it a couple nice plays. Yeah, great, great vision there. Patience, patience for sure. Huber out of Highlands Ranch playing his club ball with the Mountain Lions. First down and 10 for White as those they the approach helmets. that red zone. Yeah, those are the helmets they're wearing. They're wearing their club team, so that's what's cool too. Scott back to throw. He got all, time, all kinds of time. And he tries to throw it back inside off the hands. Incomplete. Hoping to get it to uh, Griffin Wilson. And I was hoping that he was going to get it to Everett Rosenbaum. He was running about 15 yards downfield deep kind of crossing against the zone. Looked like he was open from my, my perspective there, but I think um, QB made a smart call just getting rid of that ball before the pressure got to him. Yeah, Shepard Scott. Here, check here on the back here. You can see 88's kind of waving his hands like, I, I think I got this. I think I got this. Yeah, he, he threw up that Moss hand. He wanted the ball the entire time. <laughs> a second and 10 on the 23. Renton following blockers. And Riker Renton with another nice gain. Inside the 20-yard line. Let me, this is a trick question. Have you ever seen Riker Renton get tackled for loss? <laughs> uh, what a joke. I got jokes today, Becker. Only, uh, only way down the field. I yeah. have not seen him get tackled for loss just yet, and I don't know if I did last year when he was playing. <laughs> Outstanding talent on that young man. Third and three. Here's Shepard Scott out of the shotgun. He'll look right. He'll throw the swing pass off the hands, and incomplete. And it looks like it was a forward lateral. That was another close one. And off the hands there of Messiah Klar. Brings up fourth down and five on the 18 yard line. White down 12 to six. Eight minutes, 19 seconds to go in this third quarter. Crucial, crucial moment. There are no field goals. There are no field goals. There are extra points kids can try for sure, but there are no field goal attempts. Um, so you got to either go for it on fourth down or punt it. All right, here is the snap. Scott under heavy pressure, spins out of the first one. His pass is incomplete. Somehow got out of the pressure, lofted one down the field, but no one home. And Red gets the turnover on downs. Huge fourth down stop there for Red. Red just threw that interception last drive, so they were kind of looking, you know, kind of looking to get it, get it right, get back on the right side, and uh, no, no better way to get back on the right side than stop a team on fourth down as they're close to scoring and you get the ball back. 
So 8-14 left here in this third quarter. No points yet in the third. A nice uh, interception made by White, and then Red with the turnover on down stop. You got Bronner back out there at QB. Was it? Was they call him Boo? That's Boo. Yep. Boo. B double O. No, out of the shotgun, calling out signals. Motion man from right to left. A nice little pickup gain of one or two for Tenor, and he was rocked. Smashing hit there by 49. And yeah, that is at lower in the boom. That's her, who, Huber again. Dylan Huber coming out strong in this third quarter. Take a look at this replay here. This is a nice trickeration right here comes Tenor underneath. It's like an end around, but you give it to your running back. Boom. He was hit at the 19 and taken back to the 18. That was a devastating blow, but we know Cassidy's a tough kid. He can handle it. Yeah, popped right back up like whack-a-mole. Just got right back up after uh, taking the big hit. So second and seven. 7.32 left in this third. Bronner hands off. And a big gain. Is that uh, Ling? Yeah, Andrew Ling. Right up the gut. First down, red. Ling's, uh, he plays for the Castle Rock. Uh, he's out of Castle Rock playing for the Raptors. So, and also plays some defensive end as we've seen today too. Andrew Ling with seven carries for 20 yards. Been the short yardage guy. Him and Cassidy Tenner both with seven carries. It's good distribution, good problems to have. Yeah, and then Kaysen Meyer with five. Red has ran a lot more plays than White. And that carry goes for a couple, maybe two or three yards. Fourth grade game, we saw the clock in the third quarter moved quickly. Not a lot of stoppages of play. A lot of first downs, um, a lot of run plays, right? And then uh, fourth quarter, of course, they get back to passing. But it'll be interesting to see how this third quarter goes. Does it go quick? You know, is it a possession-based quarter, or is it going to be a lot of possessions for each team-based quarter? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Looks like this could be a long drive. Red seems like they, they want to run the football and maybe chew some clock. At least that's the way it's looking to start. You know, Bronner throws that little pitch, and nothing doing there for Red. Nice defensive stop for the white team. I think getting to that football first was Messiah Clar once again. Yeah, I think I like uh, what, Clark. what white team is doing in terms of they went into halftime. They had a plan. They changed the plan at halftime. They came out with a new plan, and they said, here's how we're going to stop this misdirection. And I think they're on, on point. Their plan is pretty solid right now. They sure are. Uh, all defense so far in this third quarter. Third down and 10. We'll get Boo Bronner from the shotgun. Link to his left. Bronner immediately looks to his left. He'll throw that fade for Armstrong. Armstrong is there. He's got it. Jace Armstrong off to the races. The 30. Armstrong brought down from behind at the 20. Bronner to Armstrong for a huge gainer on third and long. Unbelievable effort there by Johnny Paldino to get chase him down and make that tackle. Yeah, touchdown saving tackle. Oh, yeah, I mean, otherwise red team goes from being up six to up at least 12. This is a big point in the game here for White, and maybe that Paul Dino tackle will, will help him, you know, make sure that the mighty Mo doesn't go on the other sideline, but red team is on fire right now. They sure are. That's a 50-yard gain on third and long. Bronner throwing it up for his big target, and Armstrong comes down with it. Check the replay here, of course. O-line didn't right move. No one really moved, and I'm not sure if that's designed or not. Maybe they were like, let's just snap it, but no one moved. Caught a lot of guys off guard for sure. And then speaking of caught, Gianni Paldino. Yeah, big Paldino, hustle great him. hustle. See the breakaway speed by Armstrong as well. There's Tenor, and Tenor following the right side of his offensive line, short gain. And Jace Armstrong with that catch now. That is a three on the day for him. Get his yardage in, in just a moment. Yeah, Jace did a nice job there of finding that ball. Sometimes when you, when you go run and, you've, and you're looking up, it's hard to like run and look up at the same time. He did a nice job of looking up, seeing it, and then running to where he's got to go to get that ball in his hands. Because once he got that ball in his hands, he about took it to the house. Now 74 receiving yards now for Jace Armstrong. Highest in the game for, uh, for either team. Second and six, Bronner. Fade. 
And it's incomplete. Tight coverage there, no flags. As he lobbed that one up high in the air. Went incomplete looking for Dax Geck. I'd like to take a moment here to do a buffs break. Buffs have the ball, under two minutes to go. 76 for Marquette, 70, 77 for Marquette, 76 for the Buffaloes. We'll keep an eye on this one and oh, see geez. how that ends up. High drama there. Winner goes to the Sweet 16. Yeah, the second round. Buffs haven't made the Sweet 16 since 1969, so it could be a historic day up in Boulder today. We're not going to talk basketball all day, guys, but we're going to give you a little bit of it here because we're in the home of the Buffaloes. So third down and seven for the Red Squad. Yeah, Bronner on the shotgun, Andrew Ling offset to his left. Single man right is Dax Geck. They'll put Briscoe in motion, handoff, Ling. Ling inside run, he'll pick up a couple and bring up a fourth down. Maybe two or three yards there for Andrew Ling. And I would think Red will go for this on fourth and four. Yeah, three yards on that carry. Ball is on the 15-yard line right between the hashes. Ling comes out for this fourth down play. Got Case and Meyer in the game as, long, as well as Cassidy Tenner. So this will be an interesting backfield. Yeah, Tenner has an H-back on the left side. And uh, Meyer is the running back. They give it to Case and Meyer on fourth and four. Meyer, nice vision. And I think Meyer has enough he for the first down. Now. Yep. And they convert on fourth and four. Yep. The patience by Meyer following his uh, big offensive line. Yeah, I, I love the patience too. I love the tempo he went with. He didn't put his head down and feel like, well, I got to get four yards and I'm going to do it with my head down. He put his head down, gliding, sliding, moving, shaking, right? And then even when they hit him and about to wrap him, he still spun it and got two or three more yards on it. So more subs here for Red. Lopez coming back in and Briscoe will head to the sideline. First and goal from the nine-yard line after that run by Meyer. Ended up going for six yards. They needed four. Approaching the two-minute mark in the third quarter. Bronner from the gun throws another fade for the end zone. Geck is there, but it's incomplete. Geck seemed to be running what was a slant, and, yeah. and the QB was throwing what thought was to be a flag. Absolutely. All over it there. Coach G, he, uh, yeah, inside leverage versus outside leverage, and we'll have second and goal from the nine. Yeah, it's Geck to the sideline. <laughs> he's, he's chatting with his coaches right now. I think uh, I think he did run the wrong route. See both coaches kind of tell, telling him there. That's all right. Second yeah. and goal from the nine. These kids are about as close to perfect as you can be, but nobody's perfect. So. Nobody's perfect. Handoff. Meyer. And he swallowed up pretty quickly. Yeah, what I've noticed, if, you, if you're going to try and tackle... Meyer, you, you might want to bring a buddy with you, yeah. right? And then when you grab him, you got to hold on for dear life and just kind of go down to the ground as, you know, and still, it may not work. That's how good that kid is. A whole sleuth of defenders combining on that stop to bring Meyer to the turf. Now uh, third and goal on the seven-yard line. Huge third and goal. And the key is that we, we're pretty certain this is four-down territory, right? So you want to make fourth down as hard as possible. Right, and the way you make fourth down as hard as possible is have a great third down here if you're defense. Third and goal on the seven. Bronner out of the gun. He'll look right for the end zone. It's caught by Lopez, just short of the end zone. Nice gain of about four or five, and once again, we'll have fourth and short. Carter Lopez on that reception. Yeah, replay here, you can see. Little jet sweep action, looking in there. Great pass through the window there. Who does a nice job of getting the ball out of his hands, delivering it to an open receiver. And then nice catch and a little forward gain, just, just short of making it happen. So fourth and goal, this is it. Can White go up by two scores? Or can Red go up by two scores? There's Bronner with Ling in the backfield with him. Bronner throws left. Off the hands, incomplete as there's a big hit at the end. 
looking for Cassidy Tenner and coming up and delivering the boom for the, the white defense. That was... That's Johnny. Yeah, Paul Dino. He's something. Rocked him. He's something. He delivered a hit on Tenner earlier, too, when he actually intercepted the ball. These oh, guys, that's right. You know, and, and, and go look at the heights and weights. You'll see these guys aren't the biggest or strongest, but, man, they can deliver a blow, whether it's when they've caught it or when you've caught it. See the, the head snap back there from Tenner, Paul Dino. Yeah, he was coming in, coming in hot. Hopefully Tenner turns out to be okay. He came off the field earlier, had a little stomach issue, went ahead and scored two touchdowns right after, and we call that the puke and rally. <laughs> <laughs> so Tenner, hey, he's up on his feet. He's walking towards that huddle. Oh, yeah. Good luck taking, trying to take Cassidy Tenner out of this game. There's no way that he would allow it. No chance. No chance. He's a gamer. Wants to be out there. Before, uh, after the turnover on downs, we've got 41 seconds left in the third quarter. Big stop by White. Now they have a long field to work with. Got the big quarterback out there again. Looks like Flores. Trouble with the snap. Flores picks it up. Going to try the right side. Flores bouncing off tacklers. He's at the 15, just dragging guys with the ball. Came out. In red, they say they have it. They do. Red football as it was forced at the very end of the run. Yeah, and that's, that's a good, tough run. But also, when we're doing our good, tough runs, we got to do a good, smart run. I think with that, holding that ball out there like that, that's a good way for a ball to get rocked out. Take a look at the interception there earlier. Yeah, it was interesting. to You could kind of see he was trying to get more yards. You can't blame him for trying to get more yards. You know, he's reaching, he's going, he's giving everything he's got. Look how big and strong this kid is reaching. He's going. He's giving everything he's got. And then, boom, out comes the ball. Oh, man. Yeah, it looked like he was just trying to reach out. And 14 on red. Made a great effort there getting in there. That's Memphis Montoya. Called his name a number of times. Take a look down here. Here comes some of the kids coming from the next game. Oh, man. Getting ready to go. New hey. crop of talent. Right? And, hey, take a look at this down here. This is our setup. Look at the Coach GTV setup. Oh, hey, there's the rat. Garrett. With the Rat Gilbertson, hey there's Roy Boy, working the ones and twos. Man, what a family we've built here at Coach GTV, literally. A great crew. So the turnover on downs happened, right? And then Tenor wasn't feeling it, kind of sat on the ground a little bit. And then one play happened and a turnover on the run. Red team's got the ball right back. And honestly, this white team, they had one good play. They got a player making some plays. But they don't got any points to show for that. You know, every play from two on has gotten them a total of zero points. Jeez. Yeah, they, they've really, I don't know. I and don't I, know. I thought they were in line for a big offensive day. And they are. Look at the numbers. They're all there. All the numbers are there except on the scoreboard. You know, that's just still a six. Right. And, um, you know, you got to give a shout out to the way Coach Brayton's got his defense playing. I mean, they really have hunkered down. Um, Paul Dino and the boys over there have really hunkered down on defense. This game, in theory, I mean, just in this quarter alone, 12 more points could have been added for red. And white has stopped that. So good job on white defense. We'll see if they got one more in them. So after the, uh, for, the forced fumble and then the recovery by, uh, I think it was Burke, Burke Steber was on the recovery. That was a mad dash down there. Once that ball came out, it, Every team on red, every player on that red team wanted it. Short field on the 21, they want a timeout. And the red side will get one. Oftentimes, these kids we mentioned are used to playing in uh, all the games. They're not used to coming out of the game. So sometimes with all the substitutions and the rapid in and out, it, it can be a bit confusing, and I think that timeout was taken there because a guy on the field uh, wasn't where he was supposed to be. You know, some of the highlights here from earlier in the game. That was the touchdown reception by Cassidy Tenner, and now here's his touchdown run. And then Riker Renton making moves. I remember this one. 
He fumbles this one, though, right at the end. He here. did. He did. Ball came on, and that, that has really been the turning point of this game. The white team hasn't gotten to the 15-yard line since that moment. And uh, Boo Bronner. That interception there. I think we're going to have, we're gonna have a, a quarterback change. I think they're bringing big 36 back. Yeah. In. See what he can do. Which I would bring him in to run, exactly. I'd give him that Tim Tebow job. Yeah, right on cue, right up the middle. Yeah, I mean, Cam J6 Newton. J6 Flores. Dude, we all forget about how great of a running back Cam Newton was, or maybe we don't. I mean, but super talented passer Cam was. We all know that. Um, but, man, his ability to run. And then, of course, the old jump pass, too. He's, he's got a little jump pass in him. Those big guys, once they get down near the goal line. Hide behind the old line for a little bit, and then boom. Absolutely. A two-yard gain there for Flores. Second down and eight as we have hit the end of the third quarter. Wow, this is a battle. Get your fours up. It's fourth quarter time here in Boulder, Colorado at the Colorado Youth Football Invitational. Red up 12-6 to six on white in the fifth grade championship game. There's 12 minutes to go before we hand out some more rings. And that's what we're playing for here. You know what it is. The, these kids, they did their interviews. They want that ring. These coaches, they did the interviews after the end of that last game. They want that ring. And then after the game, they get to go upside. They get to go outside. Coach Z gives them that ring. Everybody gets a ring, but the gold ring is the one. And then this year, the inscription is see you for you. Wow. See you for you. Yep. I like that. Yep. I like that. I've gotten a, a chance to see him up close and personal. Coach Z coming into the... Uh, the Mile High Sports Studio and showing off the, all the hardware, the belts and the rings and really cool stuff. And, you know, for these kids to, to get that kind of recognition is, is big time and um, really pumps them up, which is awesome to see. They didn't have this kind of stuff when I was when I was in fourth and fifth grade. No, they didn't. <laughs> and and if we're going to give recognition out, let's give it out to Coach Z. Let's give it out to Mandy Martinez. Yep. You know, Chris and Cassie Unruh, all the work they've done. Lonnie's walking around doing everything he can. Plus, he gave a nice motivational speech yesterday. We got our guys from Game Day Kicking that are here. Ryan from Sports Reels. Dude, I'm telling you what, these Sports Reels cats are sweet. All right, back we to the We pick action. things up here. Fourth quarter time. Flores will hand off, and this time it's Casey Meyer. Meyer between the tackles, not going down easy. Meyer just keeping the legs turning. He gets to the 15-yard line. That'll be a pickup of four. Uh, you see that the strategy here by Coach Starts just kind of want to chew some clock. You know, let's not force anything deep down the field. Just stick with some smash mouth football. It's working. Yeah, I mean the fumbles there. They've been happening, but um, but the interceptions have been a little bit more prevalent. I feel like, and so with that, it's like if if I'm trying to take care of the ball, I think the best way to do it is to hand it off. Second and six on the 15-yard line. Bronner back in the game in at shotgun. And Boo Bronner's thrown 438 yards today. Hand off Meyer. And Meyer picks up, I uh, want to say about five, medium gain. Could be just shy of the marker, depending on the spot. Might have been a direct snap there, too. I'm not sure what that was. And they're going to say first down. So Meyer, that's second effort. Pyle kept mush, uh, pushing forward, and he just barely got enough to move the chains. It'll be first, first and 10 at the 11. First down, first. Oh, Bronner working from the gun. Got Meyer with him once again. There goes Lopez in motion. Hand off its case in Meyer. And short gain. White, you know, they're expecting run. No gain, maybe one yard on the play. But a lot of time coming off that clock. You know, Red playing with the six-point lead. Still no points in this second half. As you can see down here in our graphic, we got our down and our two go. That comes straight from the scoreboard. So um, every now and again, that seems to be not exactly what we're telling you. I think you might want to keep an eye on that down and distance marker. That's always a dead giveaway. Second down. From the eight. Bronner barking out signals, clapping his hands. There goes Tenor in motion. Bronner throws in traffic. And almost a turnover. Man, if I'm Romello Henderson right there, I'm begging for one I'm of those. I'm thinking to myself, man, I'd like to have that play over again so I can have the first pick six. 
in the history of the CYFI. Take a look at this. They do their sprint to action, right? But they just get right into the pass. Overthrown. They're uh, renting in the area there. Carter Lopez, yeah. it looked like he was kind of open, but yeah, the ball got over his head there. And Romello wants it back. Third down. On the eight yard line, once again, Bronner. From the shotgun, takes the snap, immediately goes to his right. Stiff arm, and he's brought down and sacked. What a play. Dang. Could not get out of the pressure. That was Simon Marshall. Simon says, I'm about to sack you. <laughs> oh, Marshall with a huge third down defensive play. Football moved all the way back to the 19. That's a loss of 11 on the sack by Marshall. He's a nice player, Marshall is. Five foot 200 pounds, he's a Boulder kid here, right out of Boulder, Colorado, plays for the Boulder Bears. Getting it done in his hometown. Fourth down and 19. Well, we got the marker right at the one yard line. Fade, Armstrong there, Geck is there, it's intercepted by White. And Geck will make the, the tackle, picked off, that's Paul Dino. As he continues to shine in this fifth grade game, Gianni Paldino. Paul Dino. As they will uh, award him the belt. The old turnover belt. Anytime you get a sweet play, a turnover or a touchdown, you get the belt, you get the snaps. The guys, if you see the guys in the purple shirts, they're walking around, they're taking all the photos. They're the Elevate Snaps team, and they are something. I think the one dude, has he got a chair built into his shorts? I, I felt like he was just sitting down and like it popped out of his back there. These guys are <laughs> incredible, man. The shots they get, the cool stuff they were doing on the intro day, they were putting them on green screens and having them just scream and flex. And it was a really awesome job there. Um, we're super lucky to have the fellas. That is pretty cool stuff there. Yeah, all the all the amenities here, youth football invitational. I think anyone that comes here, they don't really realize how sweet it is until they're standing right in the middle of it. 8.56, here's the play. They throw a swing pass and it's incomplete. Paul Dino in at quarterback right now. And his pass was incomplete, trying to get it to uh, Messiah Clark. Let's get the Archuleta cam here. Let's see, we got our guy up here. This is our guy, Nick Archuleta. Look at him, he's up there. What a handsome man. Look at, we zoom out and we're like, how far away is this guy? And look, he's way up there. But he's giving us that sweet Archie angle. And it's way better than the one I can give you. So good job, Nick. Look at that. That, that is, is pretty cool. sweet. Very sweet. Right down there by him, second and 10. From the own seven, hand off to Renton. Renton around the left side to the 15. Renton hops over a man at the 20. And a first down and change for the white team, Riker Renton. Got to be up over 200 after that last one. Yeah, I, I wouldn't count 300 out yet either just yet. Here's that interception. You're probably asking yourself, why are they running that play? Why are they throwing it up like that? It was fourth and 19, and there's no field goals to go. Here's the Renton play, back-to-back -back replays. Look at this. Renton does a sweet job, too, of using his non-rushing hand. He's holding the ball with one hand. I've seen him do it with his left and his right. He just hits this guy away. He pushes the other guy down. It's a stiff arm, but it's almost like a karate chop. And there he goes again. He's brought down low across the 25. It was at 209 rushing yards right before that carry. Wow. Averaging a cool 23 yards per rush. So last year at this time, we would say he'd be right, he's got to be right around 200 yards or something, don't you think? And now we have the exact stats given to us right by the guys down below. They're doing an amazing job. Um, and we're so thankful to have him. And you should see the stats that he comes out with after the game. Like, it's incredible. Only the best. Yeah, a fantastic job. Uh, seven yards there for Renton. Make it second down and three. And this will be a first down on the rush for Roberts. And Gannon Roberts picking him up, putting him down. And he's down to the 33-yard line. Under eight minutes to go in the fourth. Yeah, I see Roberts here. He, nice little juke move, takes good care of the ball. He, he cannot afford to give up the ball. White team is one possession away from tying this game up. And they're one one point away after that from taking the lead. Now running they're the ball. in a good spot. Yeah, running the ball with a lot of effectiveness so far with Renton and then Gannon Roberts right there. Scott will hand off back to Gannon Robertson. He's met rather quickly. Good job by the D-line for the Red Squad. 
Big 7-7 seven, seven in on that one. Yep, we love to give our, our trenchmen the, uh, the, right. the love they deserve. Our linemen on the O side, the D side. Man, we love it. Um, and even they give out a, a lineman of the game award when they're doing their post-game awards. Could be a defensive guy, too. Doesn't always have to be just a blocker. But that's how much they uh, emphasize the trenches mattering here at the Youth Football Invitational. 100%. And that was, yeah, Ragin Thomas Silva in on that stop. Renton. Oh, you said he'd never been tackled for a loss. And wow. And the Any continues. other guy probably is tackled for a loss there. How did he slip out of that first tackle? Ooh, BR3. Bobby Robinson the third wants that tackle back. He wanted to be the one that told Kurt, Coach G, no, no. He does get tackled for loss. But unfortunately, BR3, you're going to have to wait till next time. Uh, made something out of nothing. A little something out of out of a loss. Final comes. The Golden Eagles of Marquette have taken down the mighty Buffalo. Great season for Tad Boyle and those guys. And tough way to end it, but nice work. Uh, two is left here. Here is uh, Paul Dino. Paul Dino looking for a man. Rush coming. Throws back across. And it's just barely incomplete. Great job keeping the play alive by Paul Dino. He's trying to find the big man. Rosenbaum. But Everett unable to haul it in. Very good, a good effort there by Everett Rosenbaum, but couldn't quite get the hands underneath the football. Makes it fourth down and eight for White. They were keen on the run earlier in this uh, in this series, evidenced by that short gain by Renton. Now on fourth and eight. Run it here. Run it. Or yeah, pass I, it? I don't Give think it it's a bad Renton. idea. I mean, he's averaging. Um, 20 yards per rush. They're going to throw, though. Pressure coming. Paul Dino gets rid of it, and it's incomplete, but that will be a turnover on downs forced by the, the defense, and Red will get the football back. Huge turnover on downs. Now they elect to throw with Paul Dino on fourth and seven, and Red holds serve. Really good defense. Yeah, I mean, you know, as much as I love to talk about the red team's offense, and it's been nice the way they draw up their plays, the way they scheme, and the way they've been coaching these boys on offense, you got to tip your cap to what red has done. I mean, the first play of the game, Riker Renton took it to the house. And since then, they've given up no points. Um, they've been in tough situations. They've had to convert on fourth down. They've had the short field situations. And, and uh, they've proven that it's not easy to get 10 yards in this event, because guess what? Everyone's an all-star out here. Everyone's an all-star. Everyone on the field, even the guys that maybe aren't playing quite as much that are on the sideline, they're, they're still in this game, and you know they're here for a reason. All-star level talent. All right, so we have first and 10 after the, uh, the turnover on downs. Red can tack on and make this a two-score game. A Lopez in motion from right to left, whistles, and a timeout. Will be used by Coach Brayton and his staff. You know, one of the things I love uh, to watch these coaches, and one of the things I love about football coaching staffs is how big they are. So, and the reason yes. I say that is, is co Coach starts, he doesn't have to be yelling and calling plays. He's got a guy to do that. He doesn't have to be telling this and that. He's got a guy to do that. I look over, and just as you're mentioning, you know, it's unfortunate some guys don't get to play as much as others. Coach starts is going down the line, giving them love. Yeah. wrapping them up and then you know they're talking I, I see one kid he goes okay with this and then and they're talking schemes they're talking systems so it's really cool that coach is doing an awesome job of of kind of getting his players you know to know that I'm the head coach of this team and I love you just as much as I love the guy who who scored two touchdowns today 6-12 remaining in the fourth quarter and guys uh, Jazzy Nigel working hard for uh, someone to talk to down there Hopefully, can hook up with someone soon. No worries. So 6-12 on the clock. Lopez goes in motion. Same play as the one they were going to run. And is that oh, a fumble? Oh, oh. oh, Renton takes it away. He straight up strips him. Riker Renton says, give me that. And he takes it away. Look at the belt. <laughs> Sprinting on the field with that belt. That's the biggest play of this game. Oh, my goodness gracious. I don't believe what I just saw. Cookies. That was unbelievable. Not only was it unbelievable, the pressure he got and the fact he was able to get into that backfield, but then instead of going for the tackle, he was smart enough to make the decision to go for the ball. And I think <laughs> late in the games in a fourth quarter of a close game, and whether it's hoops or not, 
I would always teach the kids, let's go follow the ball. So in that case, Riker, go tackle the ball. That's unbelievable Check play. Check this out. Watch him just shoot That is a game-changing play if I've ever seen one. You know, Tenor has it, and then Renton. And that's one of the bummers, you know, as a, as a kid who's trying his hardest to never give up on a play. You know, sometimes going down might not be the worst thing to ever happen to you because you get to keep the ball, whereas staying up, we saw it uh, over here with the big running back fumbled when he was trying to stay up, and then we saw it again with Red Team and Cassidy Tenner just trying to do a little maybe too much, um, especially when there's a guy like Riker Renton in there thinking about taking it from you. Absolutely, and now with his team down six, he's in the backfield with, uh, with, with Shepard Scott, and you might, you might feed the beast right now. And here they go on first down, Renton at the 40. Renton gets a downfield block. And he's inside the 35-yard line, dragged down. Nice tackle. Very nice tackle. Being, pu being pumped up after that one, too. That was uh, Jason Villa. Let's give some love to Jason. He's a fourth grader playing up with the fifth graders. Yeah, he's the only guy listed he's with the fourth grade tag right there. He did, he did look up and give the boys in the, in the uh, press booth a shout-out. I was looking down, and he gave me a wink and a what's up. And I'm like, all right, Via, I see you. I see you, Via. I see you. I see you working out here, mm -hmm. tackling Riker Renton. Speaking of working, yeah. Oh, man. This guy is hard. Just dragging defenders with him. Took him for a ride. And that's another first down for the white team. He does have nice height on him, Riker Renton. 5'6". Not exactly the biggest guy. 110 pounds, right? But he's 5'6 there and does a nice job of getting yardage. Look at this defensive substitution Hockey for Red. Subs. Straight line change I here. I love it, yeah. Just 11 for 11. All right. Give me 11 new guys. That's how you know everyone's getting reps. Winning is important, of course, but we want everyone to be an all-star today. We, we want everyone to be treated like all-stars. We got an all-star with us right now, Gianni Paldino. Let's go down to the sidelines. All right, I'm here with Gianni, who has three picks on the day. What's allowing you to make so many plays on defense? Um, I'm just reading in the play and just having fun. Nice. Um, what, did you eat? what did you have for breakfast this morning that allowed you to have so much energy? I had a Starbucks bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Bacon, egg, and cheese. You can never go wrong with that. Back to you guys. That was Reed Briscoe on that big sack. Hey, great interview there with, uh, with Gianni. Nigel asking him, what's working so well on defense? Why do you keep picking every pass off? And he got a little free promotion in there for Starbucks, too. Maybe he's trying to, like, get a couple... You know, free lattes at his local yeah. spot. He told him. He's already thinking he ahead said, for NIL. You. He said, I mentioned you on Coach GTV. <laughs> oh, he's a thinking man as well, as, as well as a great right. football player. Business. So second and 20 after the sack. Scott's going to throw it on the seam. And it is picked off by Tenor. Cassidy Tenor at the 30. He's looking to score. Tenor to midfield. And he's wrapped up there by Shepard Scott. Another big play by the Red defense. As we get a flag on the interception return. And Cassidy Tenner playing center field. The recipient. And puts on the, the turnover belt. And that Red sideline excited as ever. Hey, <laughs> Dude is fired up. That's picture time. One of the cool things too is, you know, we... Parents are allowed to kind of be right in there, right in the mix a little bit. You know, I think when they're at their club games, a lot of time they go sit in their chairs on the sidelines. But, you know, if you want, you can get right in there and go give your boy a hug. And so it's uh, it's pretty cool to see these these families all get to celebrate together. Yeah, he's, he's dap, dapping everyone up. And, man, a great play there by Tenor. Huge play. Uh, we'll see what the flag is. May have been uh, another illegal block on that interception return. Looks like the, the injured player is okay for the white squad as well. That was, uh, that's Jacob Opperly, number 62, out of Arvada, playing his club ball with the Arvada Mustangs. You know what's crazy is that we're trying to get Tenor. We, we want to get an interview with him. I, I don't know if he comes off the field. He's a, he's a tough guy to track down, and man. I don't know why you would take him off the field. On defense, he's a ball hawk, right? And on offense, he, he knows how to take a one-yard gain and make it a... A 21-yard gain. See his nameplate there out of his back? It said the word dog on it because he is a dog. Yeah. That's no what Coach Prime's looking for. Now Coach Brayton, he's well onto the field. He wants to speak with one of the officials. He's, yeah, in between the hash marks.
At three minutes and 41 seconds left here in the fourth. Getting it figured out here. Not certain what the confusion was. There was a so pass you had the and penalty then there was an interception. Yeah, it was. A, it was. And a that's it, right? Penalty on the interception return. That's why. Uh, I got moved back. Got or, moved back. Makes sense. And I think there was. It looked like there was kind of a blindside hit there. All right, here we go with the red team. Bronner hands the ball off to Casey Meyer. Meyer following his left guard, fighting for extra yardage. A couple tough yards for Meyer. As the clock winds, I think Red will attempt to take as much time as possible. I mean, this is a this is a big game. This is you know it it ha not much has happened since the middle of the second quarter, which means that every little play is so big because it could go the opposite direction, like the Riker uh, Renton stolen fumble and like the Cassidy Tenner interception. Big plays can happen quick. Now, bummer, White couldn't really capitalize off that play by Renton because that was tremendous. There's a run up the middle between the tackles. It's Meyer getting those tough yards. And Meyer knifing his way in between the tackles. Gets himself a first down. And the clock continues to run. Got a kid out on the field out there. All right, here we go. First down and 10. Red in the huddle. And thanks for being with us. Second of five games today. The sixth grade game coming up next. Mark Jackson, Nick Archuleta on the call for that one. And That'll be a one o'clock kick for that one. 2.07 right now. Bronner from the shotgun. Once again, it's Case and Meyer. Multiple flags come out. And illegal shift on the offense. Shifting is good, right? Illegally shifting, not good. Not so much. So that's the kind of the, the gift and the curse of, of putting that into your offense. And then the, the other problem is it stopped the clock there for a bit, but now they're running it again. So back them up five yards, call it second down and 15. How about Kane up there playing left guard for the red team as well? He's a beast. Austin Kane, I saw him playing on, on offense and the defensive line. He's not a beast. He's the beast. The beast. Beast mode. From the 37-yard line, it's Lopez. And Carter Lopez gets, his, gets the pads down, picks up a couple. As I think we'll have a timeout. Smart call there, get the timeout. It's gonna be a third and long. Again, you know, like the scoreboard says third and 15, right? And now it says first and 10, but it's third and nine. So it's a little tricky. Um, we got a new guy running the board. So just kind of go with what your brain is telling you. I think you'll be fine there. Third down. Third down here, nine yards to go. This is where the coach Brayton's saying, hey, somebody make a play. If you can force a fumble here, force that fumble. Go for the football. Take a gamble. We need a turnover in the worst way. So third and nine, we'll, we'll get Bronner from the gun. J um, Geck is split out wide to the right. And that's Dax Geck. Once again, it's Meyer. It's been the case in Meyer drive. And Meyer, big gainer. Got himself a first down, and he stays in bounds. Kaysen Meyer on third and eight. I think he intentionally stayed in bounds there too, right? Smart play Petty by the Petty play, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Kaysen Meyer. Keep that clock running, keep those chains moving, and then you just let him know, hey, you put that gold ring right on this finger. <laughs> Challenge. Oh, here we go. Challenge time. Challenge coming up. 
Uh, 107 on the clock. Here come the officials. You know, in a, in the NFL, obviously under two minutes in the in the first half, in the second half, don't even need to throw the challenge flag. It's an automatic booth review. But guys making their way over here. I'm not certain what they're challenging. It, it sure looked like a first down from Case and Meyer. Maybe they're going to try and say his knee was down before the the marker. That's the only thing I could think of, Coach. That they would be taking a look at. His knee was down before the marker. Interesting there. It did possibly look like it from that angle. See it again from this angle. And let, look at all these people gathering around the monitor. They want to see what the officials are looking at. It's what millions of Americans wonder every single time they get an instant replay challenge in the NFL. I think the what the heck are enough. these guys looking at? Yep. I think the fellas have seen enough. And I think the first, first down, down stands. So, point. hey, worth the challenge. You only got a minute seven left in the game. You got one. You might as well use it. Well, it counts it, as like a little timeout as well, too. You know, right. In theory. Um, th they have to snap the ball. They can't just kneel, per se. You know, they got to go. F well. No victory maybe, formation. Maybe they can kneel. I don't know. Can you kneel? Hopefully not. Hopefully everyone just gets running plays. But, yeah. uh, but that being said, then, then you could fumble. So why would you do that if you wanted it? I think they're going victory. This looks like the V formation. Yeah, it's, it's definitely Shotgun a tight v. formation. Shotgun Got v. a couple receivers just outside the tackles. It is a and Shotgun Bronner v. will take the knee. And Coach Startzer will uh, get himself a W in the fifth grade game. It yep. appears that way. And there's Coach down here. Just you know, His guys are coaching, and he's there talking to players. He wants to make sure Reed Briscoe knows how much he loves him and appreciates him, right? While his coaches who love and appreciate Coach Coach Starts, they're doing their job so that coach can do his. Take a look at these boys here. And that should be the final play of the game. How about that? Look at the reaction on those kids. As Red will come away with a 12-6 victory in this one. Awesome stuff. Case and Meyer as pumped up as ever. Him and his, uh, his pops... Just uh, did a little handshake together. That is a very cool moment. As uh, it was all defense in that second half, no points. No points. Didn't see any points in the second half. Nope. And and white team, they had a nice squad. They had nice numbers, but yeah, the points is where they came up short in today's event. And uh, everyone's a winner, um, but it's the red team who's going to get. So the here's the the very first play of the game. Riker Renton getting the scoring started with a 70-yard touchdown run. Renton had 240 rushing yards in this game. He had 240 of the 281 total yards for White on the ground. That is incredible. That White is actually incredible. outgained him by, by, by 40, 281 to 241. But like you said, just uh, when it mattered most, those are, those are the plays that count. Yeah, and I mean, as we look at the passing stats, four completions, three interceptions, and six total yards. For the White team, it just ball wasn't quite coming out. So... 137 passing yards for Boo Bronner, big time. And uh, some of the defense stats, too, for uh, for Red Jace Armstrong and Thomas Silva, both with four tackles. And then for the white squad, Rosenbaum, again, and Roberts, and uh, Dylan Huber, all with six tackles apiece. 240 rushing yards for Riker Renton in the loss. As Red comes away with the fifth grade of victory as they get to celebrate by running through that tunnel. Awesome. High fives all around. And see if we can get an interview with uh, the winning coach, Nigel and uh, Jazzy, down there right now. Good luck, though. Yeah, they're coach all Coach Starzer. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, oh, maybe not? Possibly not. Coach, I think, is trying to bring maybe a, or oh, we may have been a, a player out. Uh, yeah, interesting here. A player out with Coach Starzer. Hey, you got to love it. We're... we're uh, we're doing our best here with Nigel trying to track down a player. He's doing it all. He's grabbing players and then he's interviewing them. Let's see who he's, who he's uh, looking for. It's going to yeah. be Tenor. There's our guy. There we, go. we weren't able to get an in-game interview with Cassidy Tenor, but looks like we're able to pull him aside for a couple moments of his time. So we'll throw it down to Nigel with uh, the winning coach, Startzer, and Cassidy Tenor. All right, I'm here with Coach. Coach, how were you guys able to shut shut out the other team in the second half? You know, we talked about his turnovers, and we came up with a huge turnover at the end with this man. 
he made a big pick, made a big run back, and just a dog. Played tough. All right, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, Cass. Um, you had two touchdowns in the first half. Uh, how were you able to make those plays early on? Uh, I made those plays because my blockers, I want to thank you to my blockers. Thank you for blocking for me. Uh, I'm super happy, and I'm a dog, man. You, you, you took a pretty big hit in the second half, um, but you were able to bounce back, and like Coach said, you got that huge, huge interception uh, to pretty much salt away the game. Uh, what did you see on that play that allowed you to make it? Um, I saw the quarterback pump fake to my side, so I went over here, and then I just picked it. All right. Yeah. Congratulations to you and your team. Uh, back to you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Nigel. Cassidy Tenor there says, I'm a dog, man, and he sure is. He, he's, he is right about that. Big congrats to the red team for their 12 to 6 victory and you know for coach Brayton as well. I think they they can be proud of what they accomplished in these 3 days and you know getting these guys ready to go. But just a fun game overall. And uh coach D any any final takeaways yeah, from you know, this fifth I grade mean, game? The first game we watched a lot of big plays on offense. Second game we watched not very many big plays on offense cuz the defense was so stout. So get get ready for uh, another great game after this with uh with the 6th grade game and that'll be a fun one to see. What, what happens with that? Is it going to be more defensive like this game was, or is it going to be big plays like the fourth grade game was? Alex, I've had a blast uh, calling games with you. Thanks so much oh, for doing this. Oh, uh, absolutely. It's been great. Uh, three more great games to go, and one thing I do know is the kids are going to keep getting bigger and bigger as we go along through the day here. Yeah, if I were you, I'd keep tuning in to Coach GTV on YouTube. Keep watching these games. Whether you got a kid in them or a dog in the race or not, this is the best that Colorado football has to offer, and we're doing it in the home of Colorado football, home of the Buffaloes. For Alex Becker, I'm Jeff Gersh, and we appreciate you watching this production of Coach GTV and the Colorado Youth Football Invitational. And that wraps up another great all-star football game here at the Colorado Youth Football Invitational. And boy, it sure did not disappoint. Boulder, Colorado has seen some action today. <laughs> I love football, ups, downs. All the, all the camaraderie. I love the high fives. The kids are absolutely enjoying this thing. And you can tell the families are loving it. Um, the coaches are having the time of their lives. You know what? It's a celebration of football here in Boulder, Colorado. And, and we couldn't have done it without uh, Chris and Cassie putting this together. You know, Zarek and Mandy, all the volunteers, all the crew, um, and guys like you. Mark Jackson. Well, thank you for having me. It's been an awesome, awesome afternoon. Well, we thank you for watching the 2024 Colorado Youth Football Invitational on Coach GTV, and we'll see you next year.